Now we're going to look at doing some basic R operations. I'm going to try to answer all of these 12 questions here. I've got an RMD file open, and let's go and fill in some of the spaces in between these different problems, try to solve them with some code blocks. All right, we already know how to do some basic math with R. For example, if we went into the console and went one plus one and press enter, we'll get our answer. Let's add some space, put in an R code block, and let's do some basic math inside our code block. Do some adding, do some subtracting, do some multiplying, do some dividing, and if we run this code block, we should see the answers to each of these four different things. If we knit our document, we should see the code, the output, the code, the output, the code, the output, for each of our one, two, three, four lines that we ran. Okay, so that's doing a bit of basic math in R, using it like a calculator. Let's talk about order of operations briefly. One plus two times five. So what is the answer to this? Let's see what happens if we put it in here. We're getting the answer 11. And um, what's going on is, uh, first of all, R is multiplying two times five to give us 10 and then we're adding 1. So the multiplication operator is happening first. You might have thought that it would be 1 plus 2 which gives us 3 and then multiply that by 5 which would give us 15. You can always be more specific in R by using parentheses and this uh, groups different uh, operations together and make sure they happen, um, uh, that make sure that what's ever computed in the parentheses is, is computed kind of standalone. So for example, let's say we wanted to do 1 plus 2 and then multiply that by 5. Here we're going to compute 1 plus 2, that will equal 3, and then it will be 3 times 5. So if we ran this line of code, we'll get 15. Great. How about storing a number in a variable? We know how to do this. Let's make a code block. On a Mac, you can do Option Command I to quickly make another code block. And here I have uh, put some code to put a one into the variable A. Let's run that. Nothing happens in the sense of we can't see the result of this, but we can look at the environment tab and see that a 1 is in the variable a. Let's put a 3 into the variable little a. Notice now we've created two variables. So the names of variables are case sensitive. We've got one with a little lowercase a, one with a big uppercase a. You can give the variable name anything you want it to be, and uh, we will create variables with those kinds of longer names. Uh, there we go. If we make this big enough, we can see this really long name. Some things won't work. So for example, if you wanted to name your variable no, uh, with a space in it, this isn't going to work. You see right away that a little X pops up. That's telling you this line of code isn't going to work. So you can't put spaces in the name of your variable. Instead, maybe use an underscore. So that would work. Okay, so that's putting some numbers into a variable. And did we do that? Yep, yeah, we should scroll down and we could see we've got four numbers in here. Four variables with each with a different number. Let's store a string in a variable. Make a code block. I'm going to name this my string. 
of using an underscore. It can be helpful to name your variable something that is easy to, to read. Now a string is just a bunch of letters. There's a bunch of letters right there. They make a word uh, all in one without spaces. Okay. What's going to happen here if we do this? First of all, we're getting an error. It's saying the object, a bunch of letters, is not found. Um, when we write it like this, what R is thinking is that these, this string of letters is actually um, the name of a variable. But what we want to do is put some letters into this variable. To do that, we need to surround our letters with quotation marks. Now, if we run this line of code, we have a variable called my string, and we've put um, one string into it. The string is these letters right here. Let's call, let's make another one just to give you an example. So if I wanted to put a bunch of A's into there, or let's say uh, the word tiger, if we get that, um, now we have the word tiger in that variable. So that's storing a string. We could store one letter if we wanted. Uh, how about the letter B? Great. And I've just run that line of code by pressing command enter or you would do control enter on a PC. So now we've got these different variables. Each of these variables has one thing in it, either a number or some letters. Let's talk about how we can store multiple num numbers in a variable. First of all, make an R code block. I'm going to make a variable called multiple numbers. And to store multiple numbers, we're going to use the combine function, otherwise known as the C function. So we begin by writing C in two parentheses. Now we can put as many numbers as we want in here, but every single number needs to be separated by a comma. For example, we put the numbers 5, 7, 6, 8, and 9 into, into um, this variable. This is going to combine all of these five different numbers and put them into the variable multiple numbers. Let's run that. And here we can see we've got a variable called multiple numbers, and it's got five of them in there. If we were to type multiple numbers into the console and press enter, we could see its contents, five, seven, six, eight, nine. And we could do the same thing. We could store multiple strings in a variable if we wanted to. Make a code block, multiple strings, and here uh, we need to write a string, could be some letters, a comma, some more letters, a comma, some more letters. Now all of our strings are surrounded by quotations. So this, in this case, we're going to combine three separate strings into one variable. Let's run this. We could press play if we wanted. And we've got multiple strings here somewhere. There it is, and it's got three strings in it. And we could see that for ourselves by typing multiple strings in the console, pressing enter, and there they are, the three strings. Okay. Oftentimes you'll want to find a particular value inside a variable. Let's make another code block. So for example, let's say you wanted to find the second thing right here, kg, inside of this variable multiple strings. To do that, we use the square brackets. So we type the name of our variable, use a square bracket left, and it, our auto completes with the right one. Now we could put a number in here. Let's put the number 2. 
This will mean the second position inside of our variable. So what happens if we run this line of code? Oh, I can see it's not going to work. I've misspelled the name of the variable. It's supposed to have an E here. Good thing I caught that. Let's put that into the console, press enter, and notice the second thing in this variable, kaga, has been printed out, and only the second thing. We've, this is how we um, index a variable. If we wanted the first thing, we would put a one in it. See what that looks like. Yep, that's the first thing. If we wanted the third thing, we put a three in it. Oops, we need to write the whole variable name, and we get the third thing. When you write just the name of the variable and run that line of code, it prints out all three things. This is the same as asking it to print out all of the things from the first thing to the third thing. For example, we can, we can actually index and get out more than a particular thing. So if we went one colon three, what this means is print out the things from the first position to the third position. So print out things from first to third position. That's a comment. Oops, I need to write the full name of the variable here. Let's run that. And we should get all three things. Let's say we wanted to get only the first two things. We'll go one to two. And that would print out the first two things. Um, what if you wanted the first thing and the third thing, but not the second thing? Here's an example of how you might do that. Okay, I'm making a little variable inside here, and I'm going to put the letter or the numbers one and three. So this is going to print out the the number the number the thing in the first position and the thing in the third position. There we go. That's the first thing, and that's the third thing. Okay. Let's talk about replacing a particular value in a variable at a particular location make a code block and I'll just make a, a variable called X and let's put some numbers in it. Uh, how about six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. Our X has those numbers in it. Now what is the fifth number? One, two, three, four, five. It's the ten, right? So if we went and said X at position five it should print out a 10 for us because we're identifying and indexing into the variable at this position. Now, interestingly, we can use the assignment operator. So remember the arrow with a dash means we're going to put something over here into the thing over here. Over on the left side, we are talking about X in position five. Let's put a new number into it. Let's put the number three into it. If we run this line of code, um, what has happened is we've put a three into position five of the variable x. So let's take a look and see what is inside x now. I'm just gonna run this line of code with x. And um, now we can see there is no longer a 10 in the fifth position because we've put a three into the fifth position. Now remember, all of this depends on the order of how you run things. So if I go back up to the first line and run only this line, I'm pressing command return, um, what do you think is in X now? I've updated the variable because I've run this line of code and I put this thing into X. This combines these five numbers and puts them into X. So if we ran the third line now, we should see there's a 10 in there. If we run the second line, we will replace the fifth thing in X with the number three. So now X has a three in there. What will happen if we um, press the play button? Well, uh, the code will get 
run in order. So the first thing that will happen is, is this line. X will have these five numbers in it. Then the next thing that will happen is this line. The fifth thing will be replaced with a three. And then we're printing out X. So if we press this button, we should see um, actually this very same output. I'm gonna close this, press the play button, and there you can see we do have that output. Um, it's possible to do uh, to replace more than one value in more than one location. So for example, let's say we're talking about positions 1 to 2 in x, and we wanted to put the numbers 1, 1 in there. We could do something like this. We're going to take the uh, numbers 1, 1, and put them into positions 1 to 2 of the variable x. Let's run that line of code and look at the variable x now. Okay, so we've put two numbers one into the first two positions. Let's move on, doing some basic math with numbers in a variable, create a code block. Okay, let's put a, a one into A and a two into B. I'm gonna run both of those lines of code. Our A has a one in it now, our B has a two in it. And of course, we can do basic math. We can do a plus b, that will be a three. We could do a minus b, that will give us a minus one. We could do a times b. And what's going on is we're um, doing math on the numbers inside each of the variables. R is pretty neat, you can do uh, math across a whole bunch of numbers in a variable. So let's say that our variable a has a whole bunch of numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. All of these nine numbers. Now when I run this line of code, uh, a has all those numbers in it. Let's just pause for a second before I show you uh, how to multiply all of these numbers at the same time by a single number. But I'm going to ask a question. If I was to press this play button, what will be the final value of the variable a? Let's take a look. On the first line of code, we create the variable a and put a 1 into it then we put a 2 into variable b, then we do some math, and then we put a new thing into variable a. So let's uh, put a, a right at the bottom. This will print out the value of a at the end of all of these operations. Press play and find out. Okay, so what we're seeing is uh, the first three numbers, 3 minus 1 and 2, that's the output of these th first three things. And this last part is the output of this variable a. Let's say I didn't want to see these uh, three outputs anymore, but I wanted to save the code. What we could do is comment out these lines by putting a hashtag in front of them. They'll turn green. So now when I press play, we won't see these being uh, run or and we won't see the output. Instead, we'll just simply see this one line here being output. As you can see, A contains the nine numbers. It no longer contains a one because this final line of code replaced the contents of A with these new contents. Now, what do you think would happen if we wanted to take the variable of A and multiply it by three? Let's run the whole thing, see what happens. As you can see, we've multiplied all of the numbers in A by a three. So it's three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, and so on. We could subtract values, um, and that will be applied to all of the numbers as well. So now we're printing out two different kinds of things, one of them multiplying all the numbers in A by three, one of them subtracting all the numbers in A by 10. All right, 
hotkeys for running a line of code. We've talked about this before, just to remind you, uh, I, I just pressed Option Command I to create this code block. I think that's Alt Control I on a PC. You might want to double check that. If I've got a line of code like A equals one, I can press Command Return to run that line of code on a Mac or Control Return to run that line of code on a PC. And that means I don't have to copy it and paste it into the console and press Enter. It also means I don't have to press this play button. And that can be a fast way to do things. We just talked about copying and pasting code into the console and press, pressing Enter. We did that. We know that we can, uh, so yes, let's just say yes, we know how to do that. We know how to press play in an RMD file to run uh, some code in a code block by pressing this play button here. And, well, let's talk about selecting any number of lines and, and running the code using a hotkey. So let's go up here, for example, and let's say I want to run these two lines of code. It's going to put these numbers into A and multiply everything by three, and just these two things. Now that they're selected, if I press Command Return, just those two lines of code get run. And that can be helpful um, when you're trying to figure out uh, what parts of the code are doing what. All right, that's the end of the R basics uh, stuff here. And we'll go on to the next one.